This module is intended to assist Kentucky employers involved in the trucking industry in understanding Kentucky's workers' compensation system. Although the information contained within this training module addresses procedures and statutes, it is an overview and does not address the subject matter exhaustively, nor does it address all of an employer's legal obligations relative to workers' compensation. This module is intended for Kentucky employers that operate one or more commercial motor vehicles and hence are subject to the annual Education and Safety Training Regulation passed into law in 2013. This module is designed to provide trucking companies and other businesses that use commercial motor vehicles within the Commonwealth of Kentucky with an overview of the Kentucky Workers' Compensation System and the rules that govern it. Separate modules are available to address the topics of workers' compensation premiums and workers' compensation benefits. Additionally, a separate module is available entitled Managing Workers' Compensation that addresses how to effectively manage workers' compensation in an effort to minimize the frequency and control the cost of workers' compensation claims. This training module was created for you by Midwestern Insurance Alliance the workers' compensation carrier endorsed by the Kentucky Motor Transport Association and the host of the website truckingworkerscomp.com. At the conclusion of this module is a brief quiz. Before we jump into this module on workers' compensation, it'll be helpful to understand why we have workers' compensation in the first place. Before there was such a thing as workers' compensation insurance in the United States, Workers had no guaranteed way to recover medical expenses and lost wages they incurred because of work-related injuries. Their only real recourse was to sue their employer. However, in order to win these lawsuits, the employee had to prove that his employer was negligent. But even then, the employer could allege that the injury was a result of the employee's negligence. With that system, over 80% of employee lawsuits against employers for on-the-job injuries failed. As a result, the cost of workplace injuries was borne by the injured workers and their families. By extension, the cost of work-related injuries was passed on to the public at large, because when workers could not pay for their medical expenses and were unable to earn wages due to their injuries, they collected public aid. It wasn't just a bad system for injured employees, it was also a bad system for employers. Even though employees rarely won their civil suits against employers, the mere cost of litigation and the occasional large awards for the injured employees could be devastating to a business. So workers' compensation was developed as a compromise between employers and employees. It replaced the fault-based common law approach with a no-fault insurance system that is considered the exclusive remedy for injured employees. The no-fault attribute of workers' compensation means that injuries are covered regardless of who is at fault. The exclusive remedy attribute of workers' compensation means that employees surrender their right to sue employers for damages arising from work-related injuries. This system was, and is, ultimately better for both employees and employers. One thing that is important to remember throughout this training module is that each state has created its own workers' compensation system. Although there are a lot of similarities between the workers' compensation systems in various states, no two state workers' compensation systems are identical. This training module pertains only to the workers' compensation system within the Commonwealth of Kentucky. Like most states, Kentucky has a private insurance workers' compensation system, meaning that employers can purchase insurance through private insurance companies. It is mandatory, meaning that, with a few exceptions, employers must carry workers' compensation insurance to cover job-related injuries and diseases. In Kentucky, it is the Department of Workers' Claims that administers the workers' compensation program. 
Some states exempt employers from the requirement to carry workers' compensation if they have only a few employees. Kentucky is not one of those states. With few exceptions, all employers in Kentucky are required to carry workers' compensation insurance or become self-insured, even if they only have one part-time employee. In Kentucky, sole proprietors, true partners, and members of LLCs are not required to obtain coverage for themselves, but they may be covered if they specifically purchase workers' compensation coverage for themselves. However, for business partners to be excluded, they must file a copy of the partnership agreement with the Department of Workers' Claims. Without that, they will be treated as employees and subject to coverage. If the business is a corporation and the owner is a corporate officer, then that individual is considered an employee of the corporation and is therefore subject to coverage. Generally, independent contractors are not covered by workers' compensation. But that begs the question, what is an independent contractor? Generally, an independent contractor works on his or her own, without direct supervision, sets his own work hours, and provides the needed tools and equipment for the job. Workers obtained through temp services are also generally not covered, as they are considered employees of the temporary staffing company, which must maintain workers' compensation insurance itself. An individual employee may reject workers' compensation. However, to do that, they must sign a special form known as a Form 4 Waiver. This waiver must be filed with the Department of Workers' Claims. By signing this form, the employee surrenders benefits that may be due under the Workers' Compensation Act. However, they retain the right to sue their employers for work-related injury or disease in civil court. And if you remember from the history lesson at the beginning of this training module, a civil suit in court requires proof of negligence or wrongdoing on the employer's part in order to recover damages. It's important to note, however, that the law expressly prohibits employers from requiring employees to sign a Form 4 waiver as a condition of employment. Only waivers that are signed freely by employees are upheld, that is, when there's no pressure to do so. If an employer requires an employee to sign this waiver, the employer could be subject to a civil penalty. A few minutes ago, I said that Kentucky is a private insurance workers' compensation system, meaning that employers can purchase workers' compensation from private insurance companies. Although private insurance is the most common source of workers' compensation in Kentucky, there are two others, self-insurance and self-insurance groups. Generally, self-insurance is really only an option for larger employers because to qualify, there are hefty financial as well as some stringent statutory and regulatory requirements that have been imposed by the state. Self-insured employers pay their own workers' compensation losses directly and do not carry primary insurance coverage. However, they may elect to purchase excess insurance to pay claims that incur a loss in excess of a certain dollar figure. A self-insurance group is similar to self-insurance for a company, except that a self-insurance group is a group of employers that join together to insure workers' compensation liability for one another. To have workers' compensation coverage with a self-insurance group, the employer must agree to be liable for assessments that may be necessary to pay the group's workers' compensation losses, even if those assessments are far in excess of the premium that the employer was quoted. In other words, even if you, as an employer, do a good job at preventing injuries and controlling the cost of workers' compensation claims within your company, if the other companies in your self-insurance group incur large losses, every company in the group, including yours, has to foot the bill. In very general terms, Kentucky employers who are not exempt from the Workers' Compensation Act have three responsibilities relative to workers' compensation. First, they must obtain workers' compensation insurance. As stated previously, most Kentucky employers get their insurance coverage through private insurance. However, self-insuring as an individual company or as a group of companies is an option as well. Second, 
employers must conspicuously post a workers' compensation notice stating the name of its workers' compensation insurance carrier and policy number. This is required so that employees can see who the workers' compensation carrier is and what employees should do when they're injured. Third, employers must report injuries to the insurance carrier in a timely manner. There are plenty of studies that point to the fact that timely reporting of claims to the insurance company reduces the overall cost of the claim. This is because the sooner the insurance company is aware of an injury, the more effective they can be at managing the cost associated with that injury. In fact, you'll find that most insurance companies want claims reported to them within 24 hours of the injury being reported to the employer. Although not actually required by statute, employers should consider it a moral responsibility to maintain effective communication with employees after an injury and attempt to informally resolve conflicts with employees. Employees also have responsibilities associated with the workers' compensation process. First, employees must notify their supervisors of any work-related injury and must do that as soon as practical. Failing to report injuries in a timely manner calls the circumstances surrounding the injury into question and could even be grounds for a workers' compensation claim to be denied. There are, however, circumstances in which an employee has a gradual injury or occupational disease. In those circumstances, the employee must report the injury or illness as soon as he learns that the condition may be work-related. Second, employees should obtain necessary medical care and follow the instructions of the treating physician. As we'll discuss later, failing to comply with the treating physician's treatment and even failing to attend scheduled doctor's appointments relating to a work-related injury could jeopardize an employee's benefits. Third, employees must complete several forms so that the insurance company can effectively process and manage the claim. Among these forms is one on which the employee identifies his designated physician for that particular injury. Another common form is a medical release form that allows the insurance company to solicit medical records. Just as employers are encouraged to maintain effective communication throughout the workers' compensation claims process, Employees should do so as well. This includes keeping their employer aware of their recovery process and results from doctor visits. Of course, insurance companies also have certain duties and responsibilities once an injury has been reported. First, insurance companies must investigate the facts surrounding each claim to determine the payment or denial of benefits and to notify the employee of their determination. Second, the insurance company must attempt, in good faith, to promptly pay a claim where liability is clear. Additionally, insurance companies must report claims data to the Department of Workers' Claims. Insurance companies must also maintain detailed claim records that show the basis of claims management decisions. Insurance companies perform internal audits to ensure that they are properly and effectively fulfilling their responsibilities. Additionally. The claims management and settlement practices of insurance companies are closely monitored by the Department of Workers' Claims. We discussed the fact that employees must report work-related injury to their employer. Employers must report claims to their insurance carrier. And insurance carriers must report claims to the Department of Workers' Claims. However, at least thus far in this training module, we really have not yet addressed what constitutes a work-related injury. Let's take a look at those two terms, work-related and injury, separately. On the surface, the term work-related seems pretty clear. An injury is clearly work-related if it happens at the employer's facility while the employee was performing his normal work duties and during regular working hours. To be considered work-related, an injury must arise out of and occur in the course of employment and it may not always be easy to make that determination. Let's consider a few examples. Consider a truck driver who deviates from his route for personal reasons and then slips and falls on ice. It is possible that the injury may not be considered work-related, even if he was in a company truck and hauling freight. Because he deviated from his work duties to do something non-work-related, the employee might be considered outside of the course of employment 
at least until he got back on his route. Next, consider a mechanic who is in a crash in his personal vehicle on his way to work. That would not likely be considered work-related. However, if the vehicle driven by the mechanic was provided by the employer, it probably would be considered work-related. Case law is what helps define just how arising out of and in the course of employment is interpreted. Now that we know what work-related means, let's take a look at the term injury. Kentucky workers' compensation statutes say that an injury is any work-related traumatic event or series of events, including cumulative trauma, arising out of and in the course of employment, which is the proximate cause producing a harmful change in a human organism evidenced by objective medical findings. This definition not only includes injuries sustained from single traumatic events, such as a fall or a motor vehicle crash, it also includes occupational diseases, such as silicosis, and cumulative trauma, such as carpal tunnel syndrome, if the condition was caused by an exposure to a hazard in the workplace. So we know how the Kentucky Workers' Compensation Law defines a work-related injury. However, there are occasions when a work-related injury can be deemed non-compensable, meaning that no benefits will be paid. Workers' compensation is generally not allowed for injuries resulting from horseplay, injuries that are intentionally self-inflicted, or injuries caused by intoxication. But what if an injury happens because an employee intentionally disregarded a safety rule? Are those injuries compensable? In short, the answer is yes. Those injuries are compensable. However, the amount of the benefit could be reduced, which is something that's discussed in the module addressing workers' compensation benefits. In Kentucky, the injured employee generally has the right to choose the treating physician without interference from his employer. This physician, depending on the nature of the injury or illness, may be a general practice physician, surgeon, psychologist, optometrist, dentist, podiatrist, osteopath, or chiropractor. The designated physician is the primary treating physician and is responsible for referring the employee to additional providers as necessary. To document this selection, the insurance carrier will send the injured employee a form to complete and return. After the form is completed, the insurance carrier will provide the injured employee with a printed card that the employee must present when seeking additional medical services for the work-related injury. The employee has the one-time right to change the designated physician. However, additional changes require permission from the employer, its insurance carrier, or an administrative law judge. Even though the injured employee has the right to select the designated physician initially, and may change that designation one time, the insurance company or the employer may have the employee examined by a physician of its own choosing. Some insurance carriers require injured employees to seek treatment within a predefined managed care network. Employees subject to managed care plans are required to choose gatekeeper physicians from the managed care plan network and to seek treatment from physicians within that plan network. However, even when the insurance company has a managed care plan, employees can still obtain medical services outside the plan when it's emergency care, when the employee chooses to continue care with the physician who provided the emergency care in the first place, when a plan physician makes a referral, when necessary treatment is not available through the plan, and when treatment with a non-network physician was begun prior to the implementation of the plan. In this module, we discussed why we have workers' compensation in the United States. We discussed that workers' compensation is a no-fault insurance and is designed to be the exclusive remedy for work-related injuries. We also discussed that each state has its own workers' compensation system, and we explored some of the characteristics of the workers' compensation system in Kentucky. We learned that in Kentucky, most employers are required to maintain workers' compensation coverage, even if they only have one employee. 
we learned that in the absence of a managed care plan, employees injured in Kentucky may select their own physician. We also talked about some of the responsibilities of employers, employees, and insurance companies relative to workers' compensation. If you would like to gain additional insight into Kentucky's workers' compensation system, I urge you to download Kentucky's Workers' Compensation Guidebook from truckingworkerscomp.com, a website maintained by Midwestern Insurance Alliance, the only workers' compensation provider endorsed by the Kentucky Motor Transport Association. Thank you.